Hi chess fans, in this video we will look at the main lines in the Catalan. So if you play d4, knight f6, c4, e6, um, white can play g3 and the idea is to develop the bishop on this diagonal uh, while keeping some control of the center and this is called the Catalan. So in this position here, black has three main ideas. And let's have a look at those ideas. One idea is to give a check here and to uh, disrupt white early on. Another idea is to simply develop in the center and play d5. And another idea is to play c5 and maybe um, get white to advance this pawn and leave the Catalan lines. So let's have a look at these moves in turn. So the main idea behind c5 is that if white now plays d5 and black plays e takes d, c takes d, d6, we have now reached the Benoni structure. Um, it's a main line, white also plays g3, bishop g2 in those lines, but um, the idea for black is that white is forced to leave, um, if white is a Catalan player, white is forced to leave these lines and enter a Benoni lines and the Benoni is typically very sharp with a lot of chances for black and this might be a psychological advantage if white was hoping for a Catalan. And if white does not advance the pawn but keeps the pawn where it is, um, white can also play knight f3. For example, then uh, black already forced a little concession up onto, up onto uh, white because now the pawn can, can take, and after knight takes, um, white has already uh, uh, had to give this d4 pawn, a central pawn for the c pawn, and um, in this position, um, well, you could say this is already a little concession. So black can um, annoy white further with the move queen c7, attacking the pawn, after knight d2, Bishop c5, take advantage that the knight had to go here to protect the pawn. And if white uh, protects the pawn, the bishop can move to e7, again attacking this pawn by the queen, and after queen c2, you know, um, black has just developed and annoyed white. Um, another option is to play a check here, uh, which is yet another way <laughs> for black to annoy white. Um, if bishop d2, queen d6, again taking, protecting the bishop but also attacking the knight, e3, knight c6, um, attacking the knight again, bishop g2, castle. Um, the game continues, both sides have developed and black has um, annoyed white while developing his pieces. But this position is totally fine, of course. Um, a more subtle way to annoy is knight c6, where after bishop g2, queen b6, we reach kind of similar lines. I think um, taking one step back, playing c5 here, the main idea is to provoke d5 and force white into Benoni lines or to, to exchange these two pawns and force this little concession up until white. Up onto white. Okay, another idea is to give a bishop uh, before check. And the idea behind this move is that if white now plays knight to d2, black can play d5, bishop g2, and after normal developing lines, black can fianchetto his bishop here and move into some kind of queen's Indian position. And in this position here, this knight really would like to be on c3. So with this bishop move and knight d2, we kind of lured white into a position where black is well developed, but this knight is not on the very ideal square. And so if white after bishop before check does not put the knight in here, but the bishop, then we have a very similar idea because oftentimes the bishop just goes back and now black aims for a semi-slav setup where in this setup here, this bishop is not well placed. This bishop would love to be on those squares here. And um, 
this is another idea behind the bishop b4 move. After um, the bishop moves here, black also has other ideas, so it's a very rich position. Black could protect this bishop and then uh, attack this pawn, make, taking advantage that the queen is not protecting it. Um, black could also take here and then go again for a semi-slav setup just uh, in this setup of the semi-slav white does not have does not have the dark squared bishop which might be an advantage because the knight here on f6 cannot be harassed by bishop g5 which would force white uh, black to maybe weaken the king side a little bit and also uh, black can have plans to um, play the rook here advance the pawn and develop his bishop this way um, without uh, having this square here controlled by a bishop on f4. So that might be the idea behind taking here. Uh, black could also play a5 to um, to just uh, keep the bishop here and establish the bishop here because after a3, if the bishop now exchanged, this pawn is annoying a little bit here for white. And if bishop takes, this pawn is again blocking white's development. Um, black could also try to protect this bishop with c5, where after uh, bishop takes, we have a similar kind of annoying pawn here, which uh, uh, inhibits the development of white's knight. So a lot of ideas um, related to bishop b4. I think the main idea really is that, um, and this is also what you see on top grandmaster level, that after bishop d2, bishop b7, we enter into a semi-slav in a slightly improved version with the bishop here. Okay, so here we looked at bishop b4 check, and we also looked at um, c5. Let's have a look at the main line d5. Um, the main idea is basically that black wants to simply develop in the center. Okay, in this position here, um, white plays bishop g2, and now black has a number of options. Black can play bishop e7, d takes c, and again, the bishop b4 check. So bishop b4 check has very similar ideas of entering the semi-slav and all the other ideas that we had. Um, the most principled way maybe to continue is to take the c4 pawn here. Why the most principled approach? Well, black has played d5 and taken this pawn. And this bishop has Fiang Chetot here, but normally this bishop would be here ready to take the pawn on c4 in the queen's gambit. So by taking here, black is immediately asking white the question, okay, what is the purpose of your bishop here? I'm a pawn up, how are you going to win back this pawn? And um, white now has two options. White could say, okay, I can win back the pawn with the queen, check, and after bishop d7, I have won back the pawn immediately. And the game continues. For example, a6, planning b5, queen c2, c5, you know, the game continues. Um, the material is equal, um, and the game continues. Um, the other option is that white answers to this principled question, well, look, um, I am a pawn down, but I'm just developing, and I will get active play as a compensation. So this is the other main option here for white, to play knight f3. And black has a number of ideas, really. Um, we're going to look at them quickly. Black can play a6 with the idea of b5 protecting the pawn. Um, black can also play knight c6 with the idea that um, if white now castles, we're going to protect the c5 pawn by pushing the uh, b5 pawn. And there's not much that black can do against this now. Or if white um, chooses to now play queen a4 to take the pawn, to play a very sharp line and very aggressively, bishop uh, b4 check, and you know, get into complications right away. To basically say, okay, I'm a pawn up, but I'm not going to give you any active play. I'm taking the active play right away. And here, this is just a very tactical position. A lot of things are in the air, but basically, this is the main idea after knight c6 to either say, okay, if you castle and play quiet, I'm going to play rook b8 and protect this pawn. And if you want to re take this pawn back, I'm going to be able to play really aggressively because my knight 
is blocking the way for the queen to give a check. Um, black can also play c5 here. And the main idea is to besiege the d4 pawn right away. For example, castle knight c6, putting a lot of attack on this pawn. Another idea is to play bishop d7 with the idea of countering this bishop here with bishop c6. And the best way here for white to continue is to play knight e5. And then the position quiets down a little bit. And well, the question is, black is a pawn up, but white has this active strong bishop here. And the game continues in the discussion about this. Um, another idea is here also again to play bishop before check. And the main idea is to really plant this dark squared bishop now and force or force white to weaken himself. So if bishop d2, the black one is to play a5 um, or c5 with a similar idea as before, but um, black really would prefer uh, the bishop to stay here. Okay, let's take a step back. Um, after playing d5, developing in the center, the most principled continuation maybe is to take here and then we looked at the ideas a6, knight c6, bishop b4, um, c5, bishop d7. So there's really a, a lot of interesting ideas for black. Okay, let's move, uh, let's take a step back. Um, the other idea, uh, uh, um, other than uh, bishop b4 again, taking, and the other idea here for black, and you could argue this is the main line, is to play bishop e7, and the main idea is just, you know, all the ideas that we've seen, they're still in the position, um, I maybe don't want to move the bishop here to take a check in the next move, but I want to see a bit, I want to play a bit more calm and see what happens. Okay. White typically continues with knight f3, castle, castle. And here again, um, a few options. Um, black now has a choice of playing um, simply c6 or knight d7 and going into a semi-slav structure against the g2 bishop. But maybe here um, he could have given a b4 check before because if we now enter the semi-slav territory, um, this bishop here is on c1 and arguably it's a bit worse here on d2. And the other choice is to say, okay, first I play bishop e7, but now I'm going to again ask this principal question of uh, d take c and asking how are you going to retake this pawn. And the only difference is that black in this position here has already castled and the bishop is here. So maybe the lines are not as sharp, but the question is still a very positional one. Um, you know, what's better, um, having this bishop or having this extra pawn? And in this position here, white has a choice of saying, okay, um, you are pawn up, I want to take it back, maybe with the knight. Um, and if black plays knight c6, um, white can take here, um, either with the knight or with the bishop. So taking with the bishop um, is a kind of forcing line where basically the discussion is about, okay, black is a pawn, uh, black is a pawn, not even a pawn up, but black has these pawn structures here. But in return, uh, sorry, Black has these pawn structures, so white can attack those two weaknesses, but in return also these squares here have been a bit weakened, actually quite weakened. And the question is, in this position, um, you know, what's better and what's worse? Um, if white wants to keep the bishop, which somehow I would prefer, but it's really like both, both are valid options, is uh, white can also take with the knight, maybe a bit more natural. And then white can still win this pawn, but has achieved this weakness here that can be attacked and has uh, most importantly kept this um, bishop here as well. So that's maybe a little bit the ideas behind knight b5 in the line where black played a little bit safer bishop e7 and castles. The other idea is to play queen c2 and attacking the pawn with the queen. You know in the lines before white was playing queen a4 
with a check and an attack on the c4 pawn. But now queen c2 is maybe the better square. The queen doesn't want to expose itself so much here. And now um, black most commonly plays a6 with the idea if the queen takes to play b6. And here um, white has a choice, either saying, okay, I see what you're doing, but I take this pawn nonetheless. And if you pay, play b5, I just go back and material is equal again. And yes, black now has solved the problem of this bishop, you know, and the game continues. I think because material is equal, uh, well, it's an, it's an equal position, but as black it's nice to have solved this problem here with this bishop. Um, the other approach is for white to say, no, I don't want to, I still want to take this pawn, but I don't want you to play b5. I play a4 first, but then black can play um, bishop d7 with the goal of putting the bishop on c6, opposing the um, white, the light squared white bishop. And now if the queen takes, the game continues from here. Okay, so this was a lot of ideas and a lot of um, a lot of information about the um, Catalan. Maybe uh, to summarize uh, uh, in the end, a lot of the ideas focus around the fact that white moves the bishop here, but loses this pawn, and then can be playing very aggressively, saying, okay, I don't care, I'm a pawn down, or to, um, to try to recapture the pawn. Um, black often has the ideas of giving a check here, and maybe putting this bishop on a worse position, by doing this and then retreating afterwards. Um, black also has ideas of playing c5 in many positions. Um, it's always an option for black to go into the semi-slav. And white um, definitely wants to play with this bishop here and just enjoy this um, disadvantage. It's oftentimes black who has to find a system to play against this. and um, in the main line, if uh, the, the game continues like this, um, it really comes down to, to this basic discussion. This bishop against this extra pawn is often the main theme in the Slav. Okay, um, I hope you learned a lot for your practical game. Thanks a lot for watching. If you like these videos, subscribe to the channel and be updated by YouTube if any new videos come up.